Oh, goody, goody, here it comes. Welcome to the Cinema Psycho Show. You are interested in the unknown, the mysterious, the unexplainable. That is why you are here. <laughs> oh, my God, don't stop now. With your hosts, Brian, John, and Elaine. <laughs> Welcome to the Cinema Psycho Show, the madhouse for film freaks and film fans of all types. I'm your host, Brian Connington, joined by my fellow co-hosts and filmmakers, John Lane Wolscroft. I love you all, except you, Jeff. Jeff, you'll never know what you've done. I don't know who this Jeff is. Some, he doesn't either. Somebody just somebody named cool. Jeff's listening to us. Like, what the hell? So, <laughs> so uh, we're on episode 12. The Fight in 12. The, the Dirty fight, Dozen. The Dirty Dozen. Um, and this one, actually, I believe it's going to be coming out... Around the first day of summer. Yay, Ooh. summer. Yeah, summertime, and it's summertime, very summertime, fitting. Summertime, 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 <laughs> summertime, sum, sum, summertime. Because this is going to be our summer preview. Whoa. Super exciting. Super exciting. So we're not going to have any new segment this time. I know that some of you who really enjoy our new segment, there's not going to be any of that. But all these movies should be news to you because these are ones that are probably going to cause the most... Uh, Headaches. Chafing. Chafing. Ball chafing. Ball chafing. Especially during those really hot and humid summer days when it's all just swamp ass. Thank goodness all of the theaters are air conditioned. That's true. That's true. Uh, except for those drive-ins, you know, the few that are out there. And those are mostly for the hanky-panky. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. Really? They anyway. can't do hanky-panky anywhere else now? All right, now? let's roll into this shit, so, you guys. All right. So we're not going to waste any time. First one we're going to talk about, oh God, is one that already came out, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I hate myself. Out of the shell. It's made so much money already, hasn't it? It's made a lot of money Out of the already. shadows. It's really out bad. of the shadows, is that what it is? You're thinking of their concert from the 90s. Oh, that's right. Coming out of our shells. You that's guys are right. so fucking nerdy. Hey, we're both in yes, Batman shirts. And it was, we're both in Batman shirts, and it was an accident. That's true. It's let true. Me, let me actually, I'm going to pull up right here. You guys are nerdy. How much that god-awful movie made. Uh, it's probably, like, number one. Which, oh god! Which, in fairness, were the turtles ever really that great? Are we looking at it through rose-colored nostalgic glasses? Like, as much as these films stink, like the first film was okay, but Secret of the Ooze and the third film, Turtles, and it's actually not even called Turtles in Time. It doesn't have a um, uh, anything other than Turtles Three, were god awful in and of themselves. Here's something interesting, and this is this gives me hope in humanity. Um, apparently, Out of the Shadows, and th- keep in mind, this is taken from um, June 5th, so this is his debut, um, has only pulled in f- uh, <laughs> uh, 35, 35.3 million. That's it? Yay! Yeah. Because that's nothing. Shit. That's, that's June, bad. As, and that says June 5th, so... It's, yeah, it's not doing too hot. And keep in mind, it's budget. This is the best part. $135 million. Oh, my God. Well, here's the problem with these Holy shit. Is that, I I mean, now, granted, they've redone the cartoon over and over again, but I really don't think that there is much of an audience for the turtles other than adult man babies. Like, they're not getting the kids in there. I think they're getting, like, you know, adults who are either excited that there's, you know, new version of the turtles or they're pissed off and they're going to see it so they can talk about how pissed off they are and actually know what they're talking about. Which another movie on our list will be very much like that. Um, (laughs) But, (laughs) I mean, keep in mind, this is to give you a perspective. Um, When the 2014 original, well, I'm not going to say original, but when the 2014 bullshit came out, uh, that turtles bullshit. Right, right, right. um, That brought in 65.6 million. That's and it went on to gross low. 493 million. Oh, oh wow. it cost 65 million. No, it it, no. it only grossed on its opening weekend. Oh, on opening 65. weekend. 65.6 million whereas this one grossed half of that in its opening weekend. Yeah, That's bad. I don't think we'll be seeing Turtles 3. Turtles 3, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, honestly, so no crang. Well, here's the thing. They they with this one, they've really been pushing the whole 
we're really trying to play fan service to you, so we're going to give you Bebop and Bebop and Rocksteady because we know how much you guys complained that they weren't in there. Uh, we're going to give you Krang and the Techno Drone and, and all that, that we shit. Complained about? I thought we just complained. That a it lot of people. I, a lot of people did. Well, in the second film, um, Tokar the original, and Razor. yeah, Tokar and Razor. Now, the reason they had to do that was because the the creators of the comic book said no. Uh, Bebop and Rocksteady are stupid. Don't put them in the movie. But they so they had to change what animals they were and their names because the creators of the comics didn't like Bebop and Rocksteady. That's purely like a cartoon thing, which they didn't really care for the cartoon. The problem, though, is the cartoon is what amassed the audience. Yeah, nobody read the comic book. No one read the comic books. I mean, yeah, I mean, I can't really say that. There obviously were people because I know people were like, oh, I don't know what you guys are talking about. Uh, when the first the the first reboot came out, they're like, "Oh, what are you fucking tired of talking about? It still follows the comic books, you know." It's like, no, I, I I don't want the comic books. I want what I grew up with. What I grew up with was the Turtles cartoon. Okay. Although I do have to admit, when I was a kid, I, my favorite thing with the Turtles was the original movie, and that was nothing I love the like movie. yeah. And I still do like that movie, um, but it had it was nothing like the cartoon in any way. You know, it was darker, moodier. You know, they, they tried to base it in as much reality as you could yeah. with a movie with fighting Ninja Turtles and a rat, and you know, but um, it was it really kind of veered away violently from the cartoon. Mm-hmm. And then parents groups were all pissed off, and then they made a sequel that was Fucking like the cartoon. parents groups. Yeah. They just ruin everything. So, I mean, what do we think the audience for this thing is then? Little is kids. it little kids? Yeah. I mean, I know my, my, my girlfriend's kid kids have, have already said that they want to see this movie. And I know one so of them is going to go to okay. it. So, so, yeah, little kids, um, you know, the bright colors and shit like that. I mean, that, that's pretty much what they're aiming for. That's a bread and butter. I don't think they're going to attract fans. I think they tr- they're going to try to with this whole push to have you know Krang and you know Techno Drone and Bebop and Rock City, but I don't I don't think that they're trying that hard because they already know that most people who you know have a brain and grew up in the '90s don't want this movie at well, all. And I think once you actually, I would have been fine if it that. just died. Yeah, I th- I think once you see that on the big screen, you're gonna realize just how stupid our childhood was, and just it's not gonna work. It's the reason they didn't put Wolverine in yellow spandex. You know, it, you're gonna see the it's gonna crank happen and Krang one of these days, and the giant sumo robot man baby thing that he Krang used to get around, and you're gonna be like, "Holy crap, this shit is really stupid." Can can we talk about Wolverine and spandex again, though? Well, you, well, Elaine, please one. go ahead and talk about how much you love Wolverine and spandex. <laughs> Who wouldn't, man? No, you can't take him out of the jeans. We've already discussed yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, you and your Hugh Jackman jeans. <laughs> But so that's that's one movie coming up. Yeah, well, it's it's interesting that um to see kind of like the expansion of other uh, comic book characters to do a, like a crossover because isn't the um guy playing Casey Jones isn't that the is that's Stephen Arrow. Amell from yeah. Arrow? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I love sexy Casey Jones. You know, and whatever. F- in the first movie, like he kind of he looked like the kind of guy that hung out on the streets and beat people with hockey sticks. Like he wasn't he wasn't handsome, but he wasn't ugly, and he seemed like he had a screw loose a little bit, kind of looked he was a little crazy. homeless. Dude, yeah, he was fucking crazy. And this one, he's like, <laughs> I just stepped out of an Abercrombie and Fitch, you know, photo shoot. <laughs> Dude, I don't know when you think it is, but it's 2016, and like everybody has to be ridiculously attractive now. It's a thing. It's true that you're not allowed to be ugly in movies anymore. Nope. That's why April O'Neil is played by Megan Fox. <sighs> <laughs> that the sigh of sadness. So perfect. <laughs> well, anyway, that's like the first one that we wanted to, to let you guys know about. So oh, are, buckle are, in, are kids. Are we getting? Are we getting into what I think we're getting into now? ID four. Oh no. Okay. No, right. we're saving. No, he's right. actually genuinely happy about the new one. The new ID four. He makes me watch Independence Day every fucking Fourth of July. I hate it. I try to fall asleep. I, I try I to get drunk. That, Nothing I do the ever same works. Thing. I do the Nothing same ever thing. works. He oh, always yeah. wants to fucking well, watch it. You have to watch Independence Day on the Fourth of July. It is the worst movie in the history of ever. It is pretty no, bad, but it's it is so fucking it's terrible. Not. It is. It is worse than Tiptoes. What? No. It is worse than. It is more painful. Those are fighting Blame. words. No. At least tiptoes you can laugh <laughs> at. Get out. Indep- Independence Day is both terrible listen, and boring. Listen, There's nothing funny listen. about it. Independence Day commemorates the time that the Earth's forces overcame an alien invasion in 1996 using only a computer virus. Okay. And Fruitopia. And Fruitopia. That's right. <laughs> that is right. 
<laughs> okay. I mean, it's so bad. It's but it's so awesomely bad. It's not as, awesomely bad to a, me. Okay, I think listen, it's boring. As a Jewish person, I like to see that a Jew was the hero. Hey, I mean, I have no okay. problem what with about that. His don't being don't a... make this a thing. <laughs> what Just think like the fa- movie's terrible. <laughs> what about his father being a giant stereotype? We don't need to talk about that. Dude, I love Judd Hirsch more than anyone on the earth. Like when I did see that he was in the trailer for the new one, I was like, oh, I was like so excited. And that part in the trailer is the moment right before he dies. Okay? No, <laughs> fuck that. No, I'm just telling you that's that's how they're gonna. Spoiler do it. alert! No, I don't know. I don't yeah. fucking know. We haven't seen it yet. Do we want to uh, talk about how they killed off Will Smith because he refused to be in it so he could do Suicide Squad? Well, I mean, that what wasn't do you that want? wasn't do you the reason why that wasn't squad? the reason why he refused. To be in it. Ooh, tell me more. The reason why he refused to be in it was because he wanted his son to be the hero. I hate Will and Smith. They said, and I hate his family. And they said, no, we're not doing that. Who, One, is, the, who is the guy in it? The oh, new pilot. I don't fucking know. I think, he, I think he's actually the guy from Fantastic Four. Is he? I think so. Is that Michael B. Jordan? I, I think it is. It probably is, yeah. Brian's looking at I'm, l- I'm looking kids. up on the, the IMDB yeah. right here. Yeah, Jaden okay. Smith can drink a bottle of bleach. I really do not care for him or any members of his family. Did you who'd you say can drink Will? Jaden. Jaden. Yeah. Is that his name? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jaden Jaden Smith. It's a weird name. It, it's it's a Will Smith thing. What can you yeah. say? Well, um, well his his mom's name is Jada. And his Jada. name is Jaden. Oh disgusting, isn't it? Oh yeah. Fucking disgusting. But yeah, they have like these uh, promotional videos online, like kind of hyping it up, like the well of 1996. And then, like, right at the very end, they're like, Why do you say it in a 1920s news they got voice? And the very end, they're like, Is that kind of like, who, who died of AIDS? Who <laughs> died of AIDS? <laughs> Will Smith's probably like, Oh man, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, this is once again just really latching on to that whole nostalgia. Oh, it's, it's not Michael uh, B. Jordan. It's Jesse T. Usher. Well, you guys are racist. Whatever. Uh, the name was similar in Cadence. That's what I was Yeah, I mean, it, I, I just looked at him like, I, he looks I like the guy I that was see, in the Fantastic Four. I don't see Four. color, John, okay? No. You, oh, you're colorblind. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I kind of have, have some questions about this. I was like, how is Brent Spiner still alive? Oh. What, why? He di- no, but I mean, like in the movie, not in reality. But I mean, he he was he was killed, obviously. In Wasn't the he first reanimated one. by the things, though? They had a it had a wrapped around his neck, but I mean, like they checked his pulse, and they pretty much were like, "Oh, he's fucking dead." How does he magically show up in the trailer? I did see then? him in the trailer. I thought that was weird. You know, that kind of doesn't make any sense. Well, nothing about this movie no, makes but, any sense. Yeah, well, and this is another rose-colored nostalgia kind of thing. They're like, well, it's been long enough that we can throw another Independence Day movie at him, which I guarantee you this will be the exact same movie as the original. It's, I, oh, I, absolutely. I think, honestly, that this could probably be worse. Well, yeah, it'll be worse, but it's going to be like the same. It's going to be like Home Alone 2, how that yeah. was the same movie, but just in New York City. I, I just, I mean, I, I know that I, like, I thought they were going to go a different way with this. Initially, I thought it wasn't going to be we incorporate other technology and now the whole world looks like, you know, uh, a Blade Runner ripoff. OK, like that's kind of the consensus I did. I didn't think they were going to go, um, but it, it just eh. I don't quite understand how they're going to like. Shouldn't they just upload the virus? Again? Why did it take 20 Ta-da. years for the aliens to come back, though? Eh, they, they're they butthurt. They were like working on shit. OK, like we were working that on terrible- shit. We gave, we gave them that terrible computer virus that crippled them. Well, the thing is, we couldn't hurt them because they had their shields up, and then we put in the virus, and we could hurt them. So either we have to just put the virus in again, or we can't hurt them. How are they going to write their way around Hey, that's this? Liam Hemsworth's problem. You don't need to worry that's your pretty Liam little Hemsworth head about problem. it. <laughs> but I, I think we Lee can all Hemi. agree, though, that Bill Pullman is by far the best president we've had. President Perfect? Yeah. He you know, really is. You know, I was looking at the trailer, and, and from what I can glean from it, I was really disappointed that they didn't get Mae Whitman to play his daughter again, because uh, she was the little yeah, girl in it. Yeah. I love her. Like, she needs to be in more movies. She's awesome. I liked her in Scott Pilgrim. Yeah. She's, she was good. No. She was good in uh, Perks of a Wallflower. Perks of uh, being a Wallflower. She was uh, in that, too. She was in that, wasn't she? Yeah. She's also the voice of Tinkerbell, and I love those movies. She's also the voice of uh, Katara on Last Airbender. Yeah, she is, but I was mad, because like, that was like a perfect opportunity. She could like literally be in the film again. Yeah. Come on, Hollywood. Get your shit together. Well, I mean, 
keep in mind, this movie does bring back a lot of the cast. Okay, yeah, it does bring bring back what does Vivica A. Fox, who I mean, the last thing well, she, she has was nothing do- better to do. Well, nothing. she was doing uh, what the hell that uh, Cool Cat. Yes, I was gonna say that she was doing that like Cool I Cat said, movie. She has nothing better to do. Oh, remember, we can't mention Cool Cat, or we'll get sued by its creator. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't understand what fair use means. The creator. Fuck you, creator of Cool Cat. <laughs> what are you gonna do? We're not on YouTube. This is true. <laughs> you know. Um, but but yeah, what, what, what I, was I, most of the cast doing, uh, you know, other than Will Smith, who isn't in the movie, you know, for that reason, he's like, I have other better things going I on. I feel guys. like Goldblum has shit going on. He's in those, he? uh, those commercials. Got stuff. He's, in he's those got some stuff. Yeah. He's in commercials. Exactly. That's yeah. the point. Mm-hmm. He's like, Independence Liam, Day 2, I'll Liam be there in five minutes. You know, he's got stuff. Yeah, Liam Hemsworth. He's a pretty big he's got star some stuff. now, man. I mean, you know. Though, I mean, those Hunger Games movies dried up, so I guess he had to move on. Bill Pullman hasn't really been in anything recently. Mm-hmm. Judd Hurst was in Sharknado 2. So was he in shows, Sharknado 2? Yeah, that shows where his career is at. Uh, that's kind of sad. Yeah. Uh, I guess Independence Day is the movie where you go when your career is over. Should Getting this one close. be ID5? No, they're just well, they're just calling <laughs> it Independence Day Resurgence. And then this is, I guess, the second part of a two-parter. So they're gonna have a third one that kind of is. They they filmed both of them back to back. Wait, what? Oh, yeah. I did not know that. You didn't know that? Oh, well, I wow. thought I thought originally this was supposed to be a two parter. Like the first one and the second one were supposed to be shot back to back back in the day. Did they and not do that? Or I don't I mean, think I was, so. I was well because in ninety six they were supposed to have done them both because I thought back then um, Will Smith had done After Earth. Men in Black, and then had done this one, and he was like really burnt out on sci-fi, and he didn't want to come back for the second one yeah. of these. Well, no, I mean, as far as I know, it's it's but a two-parter. But they now shot this, and oh. yeah, good God, I I don't want to fucking see these movies for the show, you guys. I don't want to. You can't make right. <laughs> well, you, you know, John's gonna make you watch this on the Fourth of July. Now, you know that's. I'm, I'll, you get one. I will watch <laughs> one a year, fucker. All right. Well, we'll watch that on the Fourth of July. We'll watch the sequel on I don't know, fucking Arbor Day. The, the, no, no. The Fifth of you July. You get one a year. The Fifth of July. You get yeah. one a year. Yeah. July Fifth. We'll watch the. Sequel. You know that hangover you've got because of the Fourth. Let's go watch Independence Day Resurgence. Mm-hmm. It's that bad. <laughs> uh, I don't. I mean, I don't know how bad it's gonna be. I think on a level of one to ten, it's probably gonna be maybe an eight. Well, in this, in the trailer alone, they, they kind of mock themselves. Yeah, <laughs> in the trailer, they mock themselves. It's like, ah, oh, they, uh, they really uh, like landmarks. Uh, uh, they, they, they really go um, for the landmarks. Yeah. That was a little creepy, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> what that I could pull off a, a Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> um, but you know, they're they're mocking themselves. That. They're making fun of their own it's, movie. It's never a good time. That's not good a good sign. And then you put that in the trailer. It's yeah. It's going to be a disaster. Just you know, not in just in the movie plot, but so um, yeah, by the critics. So, There's that. <clears throat> and you know that we've really <clears throat> uh, are we? Uh, <clears throat> I mean, honestly, like the <clears throat> first two, I think on. were kind of on entrees. Not really entrees. They were hors d'oeuvres. Oh yeah, Ap- there are d'oeuvres, appetizers, appetizers. <clears throat> They're like you know, like pulled pork sliders, if yes, you will. The pulled pork sliders of summer. Um, this next one, <clears throat> I think that's the main course. It is, you know, it with is a the, side of bacon. It's the buffalo bacon mac and cheese. Yeah, yeah, and that is, of course, the very controversial. And I'm, I'm waiting. I really, I want the the comments. Waiting for the comments. Um, Ghostbusters starring bitches. <laughs> <laughs> By the way. Boom! That's where we're starting off right Shots there. Shots fired. Shots fired across the bow. Okay, no. And for those, wait, hold on. Those for those that are easily offended, that was a joke. I obviously was trying to be outrageous. Let's take it easy. No, I, I feel like this is the worst conversation right Uh-oh, now. Oh, Mike's getting turned. Because I'm, okay, so I'm... I'm a lady. I like lady things. Lady. I like lady rights. I'm all about that shit. But there there was no fucking reason to make a new Ghostbusters movie and to try to put all these women in it to like come up with some new schlocky gimmick is fucking dumb. Yeah. Am I glad that these women are in a movie? Sure. I, I like love Mel- I love Melissa McCarthy. I love Kristen Wiig. 
I love, you know, the whole cast. I actually, Lizzie Jones and Kate McKinnon are like the best part of SNL right now. Yeah. I'm on board with like those as human beings, but this movie's going to be fucking terrible and you can't politicize that. I don't think there's any way that this movie could not be terrible. I mean, we're going to have to go to yeah. see it. And we can't pull but like, we're a, gonna have a to James take an, Rolfe and well, just not see it. Yeah, I mean, but we're going to have to take an Uber because we're not going to be sober. I don't see how we could be sober. But, yeah, my complaints with this movie have absolutely nothing to do with them being an all-female cast. Same. Same, yeah, same be- here. In the best same way here. possible, I don't care. It's, Although you do problem. realize that people who listen to this will suddenly believe that we have some subversive racism slack combined with uh, sexism. sexism and misogyny. Uh, even you, Elaine, even though you've just said that you've got lady parts. Guys, I'm fully on Team Vag. That you're on could, Team Vag. Could not be You more are on the a team. closet misogynist. You just don't you, even know it. You know, I just. Well, those are just going to be people on their periods. And I just. <laughs> Once again, humor. I'm just so excited yes. that you're just digging us into this hole. But like, leave your comments. I mean, below. like I said, I, if I thought that like someone in the world genuinely had wanted to make this story about women, that would make me sing internally yeah. with Julie Andrews Joy. But I feel like they just did it to totally flip it on its head, get butts in seats, and to make a quick buck. Like this- I don't believe Hollywood's motives. I don't. Well, it's also a way to divert attention away from ever saying that the movie's bad. They're like. They put you all can't say it's bad you know? because that makes you a misogynist. That's that's the problem. I mean, honestly, the way that it has been built, the way that director you know Paul Feig has has positioned it is that if you say anything negative about it, that suddenly you, you must women. be you must hate women. You absolutely must be. It couldn't possibly be that your ghosts look like Scooby Doo. You know, uh, fucking like rejects. Look like they look the like the fucking haunted mansion. Look yeah. like they're rejects from Scooby Doo. They look like fucking shit, okay? And I haven't even talked about the fact that they quite literally are ripping off of some of the best moments from the original Ghostbusters and just turn it to utter shit. The whole library scene, the, the fucking Stave Puff Marshmallow Man is the main villain. Yeah, even though this is not a sequel, this is a reboot, but they're going to do no, all it's the a things giant they did shit in the movie. You know, in on the movie. A, a, what is by far not only a comedic classic, but just a classic movie in general, okay? They made Ghostbusters. I even like the sequel. I I love the sequel. You know, a Me lot of people too. hate I love, it. I love yeah. the sequel. Too. A lot of people knock it. How I, I like not? it. Not. It's always on TV. Yeah, and it's <laughs> and it's funny. You know, it's funny. Um, is it as good as the original? No, because it's the fucking original. Um, but this this Ghostbusters, you know, reboot bullshit. Uh, I just I can't stand it. You know, I've seen both trailers. And, I mean, the only time that I see people laugh, I mean, aside from when I went to go see, you know, X-Men uh, last week, was, uh, you know, the the whole, the the, the the passion of Christ compels you or some bullshit, like mm-hmm. when our head's spinning around, okay? Oh, weird. And, and honestly... That's what got a laugh. That's what got a laugh. Weird. But what does that tell you? It tells you that the humor level from master comedians like Dan Aykroyd and Bill Murray and Harold Ramis... You know, has now devolved to screaming. And let's be plain. That's the joke, is these, fucking screaming. These four women are fucking hilarious. They are. They're this very, is a waste funny. of their talent because I have no problem with this being, you know, a, a tent pole film no. with four women. I have, Neither I mean, I. I think it's great even that it is visibility. Like I said, I Absolutely. think it's for the wrong reasons, but I think it's great, especially because four. Three of the four women, I think, are in their 40s. Yeah. That's also really significant. That is not something that we see in Hollywood a lot. It's something that needs to continue that I think is amazing. But I don't think that for everything that's going on with the film is that the writing has got to be there for this kind of talent. Like, you can't waste them. I don't even think it's them. just writing. I think it's writing. I think it's directing. I mean, I, just, think, the I think the script thing. looks like it was well, hot. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's nobody cares. You know what I mean? They made this movie because they wanted to profit off of Ghostbusters and they and what, had the rights and nobody really cares. Nobody wanted to make Well, here's this. the other thing, too. You've already pissed off fans like myself because you the, the minute that Harold Ramis fucking dies, you announce that you're suddenly going to go ahead and make this diarrhea dump. Okay? I think that was a, a bad move, too, because people were really smarting from his death and then to announce that it was going forward, like, that just... It, it's like, well, like that was one, a, it, it shows to me... That was a me, mistake. It shows to me that... You know, they may have already had plans to do this, you know, before he passed. But it shows to me that 
they they were opportunists. Like that's that's kind of the what I see that they're basically saying, well, he died, he was the only one in the way. Now we can mo- move forward with this piece of shit. Okay, um, I, I just even, even the ghosts, the ghosts are terrible. The sh- the even the the editing of it so far, from what I've seen, the trailers looks like garbage. It Doesn't look great. No, and here's the thing: a lot of people don't know this. Ghostbusters was cut with the pace of a horror movie. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, that it, like. I, Ivan Reitman, he designed it so that it could be almost paced like a horror movie. You've got the effects were done like a horror movie. So you're basically, you've got a, a comedic script with a horror movie element to it. And that's why it works so well. On top of the fact that you have these amazing actors, you know, who, you know, you consider them, you know, pretty much icons in comedy. Uh, but I mean, I'm not, and that's not to say that I don't like, you know, Kristen Wiig and all them. As I said, I love Bridesmaids. I think it's hilarious. I mean, the the cast is top notch human you beings. Know. That's not yes. that's not a question. I just think that there's a better way they could have gone this way. Absolutely, they I, could I have think... easily said, "Hey, you know what? We're gonna have the Ghostbusters, the original couple who are surviving. They're too old to do it. They're gonna pass the torch on to a new crop." That I think would have been acceptable. I think people would have been okay with that. In fairness. Dan Aykroyd has said over and over and over again over the years that, oh, you know, the third script's on its way. Like, it's almost finished. And he said that for 20 years. And there's also, which apparently was just never true. And Bill He never Murray, had a script? I, I don't, well, he said it's like months from being complete for, you know, 10, 12 years. And Bill Murray also refused to do any Ghostbusters movies. Yeah, jumped into it the minute that they did, that they offered money. Like he's he's apparently doing. He has a cameo, cameo in it. He's the only one with a them, cameo. Both of them in it. do. I think. I'm saying. Oh, really? I thought it was. I'm just saying there was Murray. issues all along Excuse with me. getting a sequel made to the original Ghostbusters, the third film made to right. the point where they were almost left with no option but to reboot it. But if that's the or option, or you could have do just it. not done well, it. I mean, I don't know. I don't know that I necessarily have a problem with a reboot in theory if you have a fresh original script. This feels like paint by numbers. Again, we talked about it last time with X-Men. It just feels like they have this formula that they think is going to make money and nobody wants to tell a good story anymore. I mean, it's bad enough that they are going back to all these previous franchises, going back to all of these other ideas where nothing is original anymore, but to not even be able to come up with a compelling script when the characters are already done for you or when the concept is already fully fleshed out like that's just lazy that's just the failure of modern filmmaking you know blockbusters used to actually be fun they used to actually also be good movies this is just extra churning out so that they can just sell ecto cooler to people our age you know like a bunch of idiots will pay tons of money i'll buy ecto cooler right i'll buy it too (laughs) i've always wanted to know what it tastes like with vodka in it but (laughs) <laughs> you know, I mean, but they're just trying to, you know, cash in on the franchising yeah. and the toys and, you know, and the nostalgia and, and to just make a buck. Like, it's gross. I, I just think that um, and it, it, but my big thing, too, is like, I don't think Paul Feig is a bad director. I don't. Um, I think his but choice to, to take this. No, the fact that I have to say that is, is, is a problem. Not good. I, I think the fact that he decided, oh, wow, I should go ahead and try to step in the shoes of, of Ivan Reitman. And, uh, you know, do Ghostbusters. I think that's the problem. You know, Bridesmaid's an original movie. That's an original concept. Oh, absolutely. Okay? And it was, I mean, it was a great Even, idea. Even, like, Spy again, and the couple other Mac- Melissa McCarthy movies yeah. that he made. Uh, what was the one? The, the one with uh, Jason Bateman in it. Uh, something about uh, imp- imposter. About, yeah. Or identity yeah. theft. Is that yeah, what it's I think he, he directed that, too. Oh, okay. Okay, so he's kind of the go-to guy for the Melissa McCarthy movies and Kristen Wiig movies, okay? He's a decent director, okay? Why on earth would he go ahead and think that he wouldn't get this type of backlash with making this movie? That's my problem. I, is Why is he bitching saying, oh, the fanboys, they don't like me. They must be all misogynists. You know, either that shows that he's incredibly ignorant or just incredibly arrogant, it's a nice cop out for him though, because that way he can always just blame the bad press or the bad reviews on the film on misogyny instead of the fact that he made a bad film. Yeah, it's, it's true. It's true. It really is true. Uh, so I mean, I guess we'll go ahead and see it. And... You know, in I mean, so, 
trailers are not always an indicator. Sometimes trailers look great and the movie's terrible, or sometimes the trailers. Look you know what? I'd great. say that if that I'd say that was true maybe twenty years ago, but unfortunately nowadays the way that that film marketing is. Pretty much what you see in the trailer is what you're going to get in the movie. I'm just saying we need to put yeah our money where our you're, mom you're is. absolutely and correct. You're it. absolutely correct. And if I'm wrong, I will happily say it. Dude, I, just I do would not be think I would be I'm thrilled to be wrong. Like I would love to go and be like, oh my god, I am delighted and challenged all at once. I would fucking love that. That would be I great. I would love it if I walked in and the first frame of the movie was say April Fools. Happy April Fool's Day. Oh, my God. No, because movies are like $12 now, Brian. But I'm just Fuck saying, that. No, but I'm just saying, happy April Fool's Day. Here's the real Ghostbusters movie. You know what I mean? Like Interesting. Like, if it was, if this whole thing was all just a, well, we're, t- we're trying to make it terrible and you'll go ahead and see it. Oh, you actually spent the money? Congratulations. Here's the real movie that we know you really wanted. And then I'm wrong. I would be, I would love to be wrong. I, would I be feel like fine anybody, with that. like, who doesn't want to be wrong in this instance is just. They, they're they missing out because I would love for this movie to be good and to mean something. Absolutely. Why don't they just make a movie off of the cartoon that we grew up with? Huh? Yeah. That, that, would, have been, that awesome. would have been amazing. The cartoon was great. You know what? More studios should go ahead and look at their animated work and design movies. I feel like that's all we've talked about. Like every it's true. single franchise, we're like, the cartoon was better. The cartoon was better. The well, same with DC. It's like, hey, DC, you want to get your shit together? Go ahead and make movie versions of your DC animated universe stuff. Well, speaking of things that are animated, and speaking of DC, um, ah, transition. There we go. Let's go to Suicide Squad. So I'm kind of excited about Suicide Squad. Are you guys gonna crap on my dreams? No, okay. yeah. I'm excited for it too. Okay, good. It could, yeah, I'm gonna crap on your dreams. It could be a disaster. Are you but, crapping? Are you crapping? Okay, so. You've you've crap face. <laughs> I th- this is good because I think you're really excited. I'm trepidatious, and Brian. Is make a dookie this face. is this is what this is what makes this shit work, y'all. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, Do you want to start off, Elaine, since you're excited? <laughs> I yeah, I, I don't the, know. I mean, the, I feel like we haven't seen a great portrayal of her, of Harley Quinn, you know. Yeah. And I'm excited to see her. Yeah. I think the you know I don't know much about the source material, but I think that the premise is very fascinating. Mm-hmm. Um, I also will follow Viola Davis to the ends of the earth, and I love Who's her. He uh, she she's, she's oh, she, like the she's one who's like orchestrating everything. She's Amanda everything. Waller. That's right. I love yeah. her. So I don't know. I mean, I don't like Will Smith. That's like the one thing I'm not excited about. Um, I feel like Jared Leto is like way too up his own ass, and I think he could very easily ruin the movie. That's my problem. Is it? Yeah. Tell me more. I want to save it for for the end. You guys go first. Oh, that's so nice of you. Well, I do, I do feel that way too. I, you know, it's after. Nicholson and then Ledger, the playing the Joker is almost career suicide because unless you do it flawlessly in a perfect script, you, you're you're just going to be doomed. It might not even be Leto's fault. You know, the movie could let him down, or he could completely blow it. It's I don't know what actor in the right mind would want to take on the role of the Joker after you know first Nicholson was huge for a long time, then we kind of like forgot about it, and then Heath Ledger like blew it out the water. So I don't you know, and then there's obviously Mark Hamill in the cartoons and video games. We've had a lot of defining Joker roles that it's almost like impossible to follow up. Well, don't you think that's pure hubris? I mean, I I think Jared Leto seems like such a douchebag and was probably like, I can do it way better than y'all. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. He seems like an asshole. To okay, me. I'll, I'll take a dump on your your whole. You know. uh, I'm ready. My my problem is is primarily with the Joker. Absolutely, um, but at the same time, I think the Joker is a visible symptom of an issue with not only just Suicide Squad. But it's the same issue that Batman v Superman had, and that is that it's way too fucking dark, way too fucking dark, to the point where I think they quite literally were like, "Well, we're making Batman v Superman; it's got to exist in the same universe, so let's go ahead and copy everything from it, um, including some of the negative parts that we've already talked about." Mm-hmm. Now, the Joker, I agree, John. After Heath Ledger. I think you've got to wait a good 10, maybe 15 years at least before you before you try. Don't say that before you even try or attempt to go ahead and replicate that, Um, because, you know, Nicholson was stuck in the minds of so many people for so long. But he the benefit that Ledger had was one that he was extremely creative with the version that he came up with. Okay, extremely creative. He also pulled a lot from the comic books that 
Nicholson didn't pull from the comic books. You, you could make the argument that Nicholson pulled a lot from the 60s TV series. And himself. And himself. <laughs> because most people, I mean, obviously, if you're watching the original Batman from 89, Jack Nicholson's playing J- Jack Nicholson. That's, I mean, it's the same as when he was in uh, Witches of Eastwick. Okay? That's 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 pretty much prime Jack Nicholson. Are you saying right Jack Nicholson is Satan? No, I'm saying that he has one role yes. that he played in the 80s, late 80s specifically, and that's the crazy, you know, psychotic guy. Okay? That's funny. Okay? Um, Heath Ledger pretty much embodied, in my opinion, the Joker out of the comic books. I thought it... Well, I would say that Mark Hamill... Mark Hamill is, was the voice and the personality. I don't know. There, there is a lot of divergence in the Heath Ledger performance and from what you get in the comics. I, yeah, but the brutality. Right. The, the brutality of the Joker, the... the the pure, unadulterated evil wrapped in uh, that, you know, sick comedy is the Joker. I mean, that's, but, I mean, that's isn't it. it fair to say that Hugh Heath Ledger maybe didn't quite find a level of comedy? Like, maybe at, not the, as, at the most, no, like, not a, as much a dry as irony. Version. Yes. Whereas, like, I think Mark Hamill, what he brings to the role is kind of that element of, like, childlike joy, which makes yeah. the Joker all the more fucked up. Oh yeah, is that fair? Yes, I, I think that Mark Hamill pretty much is the the connective tissue, if you will. And he's, I mean, he's the best. He's Mark fucking. Well, Hamill. I mean, we've already talked about this. That like Kevin Conroy pretty much is one of the best Batman's, if not, he's the Batman. Is is the Mask of the Phantasm? Is that the best Batman movie ever made? Hmm. This isn't my conversation. That's a tough you nerds one. duke it out. Well, in fair, I, I do got to say that there was a Nostalgia Critic episode made on that topic, so I'm not exactly original here. Uh, I, I'm pulling it from his question, but he makes a lot of valid arguments. He does. He yeah. does. Um, but just getting back to the point, I, I think the Joker is a symbol of, and in, in, at least in Suicide Squad, uh, with the tattoos and just complete. It's weird. It's different. And, and my problem is, like, I cannot see the real Joker from, say, the comic books do some of the things that this Joker does. Okay? I mean, yeah, we haven't seen the actual anything other than just a trailer, but would the real Joker, you know, tattoo ha 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 on his arm? Would he write damaged? Like, I, I, I can't see that. that that's That's... So bizarre. It's a different take on the character for sure. Yeah, but it's, it's just fucking bizarre. And then I think that kind of permeates to everyone else. Like for me, my Harley Quinn is the animated series Harley Quinn. Okay. That's where she originated. From. That's where she originated. Yeah. From. Okay. Though I'm excited about Margot Robbie. Yeah, I, I think if you're going to get anyone, she's she's absolutely perfect for. It. But I think just the plus those buns. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Festive buns. Festive buns. You guys are like so nice about it to like seem like good guys. Oh, See, not I'm a lady, so I can talk about how nice a rump <laughs> is. Well, we don't want to seem misogynistic or sexist. Never. You know. Um, Never. But I, I just feel it's, it's way too fucking dark. It suffers a lot of the problems that Batman v Superman had. I mean, I may be wrong, and I know that they did reshoots too, just like we talked about last week with um, Rogue One. They did reshoots with Suicide Squad. Okay. So it's possible that they might have fixed some of the problems, but I do know that Ben Affleck is in this one too. What? No, yeah. why? Yeah. When, where, how much? He's, no. He plays Batman in it. He's in the trailer. Yeah. I mean, for a brief moment. Maybe I missed it. They have a cold car chase scene where he's in it. Hmm. Yeah. Um, this is bullshit. But how, how is Jared Leto playing the Joker when it's supposed to be like Batman's super old and, you know, it's... But the Joker is so young looking. That would be common don't sense. Don't ask questions. They did, don't did want start, you well, to ask questions. Did you start fighting the Joker when the Joker was 12? Well, well, here, <laughs> well, well you do know the, the theory, right, well, behind yes. it. The yeah, theory. they're never going to do it, though. Eh? No, that would be too smart of them. Eh? Okay, the theory is that <clears throat> the Joker that we see in Suicide Squad okay. is not the real Joker. Okay. He's Jason Todd. Who was uh, who was Robin? He was okay, the only that's Robin. What I thought. He second was the only Ro- he was the second Robin, the one that was murdered by the Joker, the real Joker. Interesting. In that, that explains why his version is so 
divorced from the version that we're familiar with. Boy, and wouldn't that make sense, though, in the universe of the films, though? Because I never thought it made a lot of sense that in Affleck's, Ben Affleck's Batcave or whatever, he had that outfit and that tableau like of the Joker yes. destroying that Robin. That would be a very interesting connective aspect. And honestly, it would fill in a lot of holes, mm-hmm. namely the fact that the Joker's teeth are all... With the, like silver fillings all over it, yeah. Which, Real. which is well, well, no. It's just it looks like his teeth have been filled in, you know. Yeah. Along with the yeah. fact that he does have wounds that would be consistent with being beaten, yeah. Okay. Um. So yeah, if they did that, I think that pretty much would redeem most of the movie, at least for me, because my biggest problem is the Joker. Um, and I don't quite know what the villain is that they're going after. Well, they're the bad guys, and they've been tasked by um, Amanda Waller to complete these missions. And the whole question of the film is, can someone bad do something good? Like, they're all wired up to some kind of thing. Like, if you fuck up, like, we're going to yeah, murder you or yeah. whatever. But, like, they have to do something good. So it's almost like man versus himself. You know, like, are they going to pull just, it off I'm just and curious do the good what, thing? Or... what the missions are. Like. Mm. Usually in, we in have one to of these, the film. well, I guess so. Yeah, they are keeping it awfully vague. I, I've noticed that they like compared to say Batman v Superman, where they pretty much just threw Doomsday in your face. You know, the first time yeah, you watched and, it. Yeah, I mean, we'll see what um, happens for this situation too. But I mean, I don't know. I just maybe maybe it's just me being stupid because I was excited for X Men Apocalypse too, and it had its it had its problems. You yeah. know, but I just want it to be fun. You know, I'll say no, this: it's not going to be Batman v Superman, but it's going to be around X Men Apocalypse. It's going to be entertaining, but it's going to have a lot of problems. Yeah, it's 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 going to be okay, but it's not going to be great. Yeah. yeah, I think we're I think our bar's too damn high. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we want we want plot and convincing characters. Ew, damn and stuff that makes sense. Damn. Crazy concept. I mean, it also is sad that we come up with better plot ideas than the writers do. Yeah, they're welcome. Yeah. Um, well, do we want to talk about some stuff that we are excited about? Yes. Cool. Do you want to do one and then I'll do one? Sausage then... party. Yeah. So I fell for this trailer so hard. It's unreal. Yeah. I had no idea previously what the film was going to be about or anything. I saw the trailer and I was like, oh, it's like a kid's movie about food. And then the twist in the trailer. Is and, and I actually don't want to give too, too much away <laughs> because it actually, you know, it's such a good moment. Like, I think you guys, if you're listening to this, you guys should just go check it out real quick if you haven't yes, seen it absolutely. yet. It's very, very satisfying. Um, but it is. It's fun you picked that word. Satisfying. Right? And it's just like, oh, it. man, it's just like, <laughs> I totally fell for it. And I know that that's what it was supposed to be because they, I know that they've been structuring the film like like any other Pixar film. Mm-hmm. But I'm just, oh, I'm pumped. I'm really pumped. It almost kind of seems to me like a mockery of a Pixar film. Yeah, totally. Like definite satire. But it just seems like a good film and good cast. Like I, I'm really excited it's a, it's about that It's a Seth Rogen piece. Mm-hmm. And I'm excited. It looks like uh, Kristen Wiig, Salma Hayek, you know, just like good voice acting yeah. in there. And uh, it just looks really fun. And I mean, just just so you, to give you a little bit about the, the, the since it's everything's been pretty much been exposed in the trailer for it, is it's basically about food and how they they a supermarket and how they wish that they could be picked. Like that's their big. It's that's like their the goal. greatest thing. They it's think the greatest it's, thing. They think it's picked. the absolute be all end all. Of and course. you know what it kind of reminds me of? Hmm. The island. Ooh, interesting. You remember the island? Mm-hmm. The Michael Bay movie. The Michael Bay movie. Mm-hmm. You know, it was that a lottery. Was probably his best, which is really <laughs> That's pathetic. a sliding scale, isn't it? Yeah, but it, it kind of reminds me of the island in in the sense, sense that you know this these these foods want to be picked, and yet they don't know what happens to them once they are picked. And, and then they realize that they're going to be eaten, and it's like horrifying. It's like horrifying. It's like, why were we told about this? It's. I mean, it looks amazing. <laughs> it looks really funny. I'm a big Seth Rogen fan, anyway. Me too. Like, I think it's going to be awesome. It'll be me too. Really funny. Yeah. So that's what you're excited for. That's what now, I'm excited for. I'm excited for a very different movie, and it's even more bizarre than Sausage Party. I'm excited for Swiss Army Man. Okay, explain what Swiss Army Man so, is kind of about. So this guy is deserted on an island, and he has, hasn't been able to find a way off, and he's depressed. You know, I mean, he's on an island. I mean, it probably sucks. And, it probably uh, sucks. <laughs> and when he's, right when he's about to kill I mean, himself. How many coconuts can you eat, really? Right? Yeah. Uh, right when he's about to kill himself, he finds a a body laying on the uh, on the shore, and it's this uh, you know dead body that is weirdly flatulent. Is what all the um, 
Oh, the, uh, the reviews. The, yeah, like, like the materials yeah. say. And he uses the gassy body to, like, get off the island. But after a while, the, like, dead body starts to talk to him. So Daniel Radcliffe plays the, the, the gassy, flesh body. See, that, that is the best part right there. And, like, it's just funny to me. Like, it's, I don't know. It looks, it looks like one of those films that exists between reality and, like, absolute fantasy where you're kind of interpreting certain things like it's not going to be one of those films where this is all the stuff that happened in this real factual account of things even even are you as... saying this is the farting bird man hey <laughs> i feel like you took away something from me oh, i'm sorry please finish you're the awful. farting bird man but you know but it is a lot like that where you are kind of interpreting what's going on and it's presented in front of you for you to kind of sift through. And I think that that makes a really great experience, especially, you know, for film. I really want to see this in the theater too, because oh, I yeah. do love that experience. So I don't know. I'm really excited about it. And one of the things I really love about Daniel Radcliffe, I was actually just saying this the other day is you can always tell when an actor is doing something right, because you don't look at them and see them. And for, for, I think for Daniel Radcliffe, I don't think it's a big surprise that his big challenge would be to transcend Harry Potter. So that people look, I mean, I look at him and I just go, it's Harry Potter. And they don't see, I I think that's important that you look at him and you don't see the boy who lived. And I actually saw a couple rom-com-ish or like dramedies, you know, with him in them. And to his credit, I didn't see Harry Potter. I saw this other character. And I think that he's going to do a really great job in this. I think it's going to be hysterically funny. At least I hope so. Because I mean, come on, farts are funny, guys. Farts are are very funny. Farts are fucking funny. So yeah. I, that that's what I'm excited. It's not a big movie at all. Like I'm sure it's gonna probably come to like the art theater in town, and yeah, I'll have to like much. make sure I see it on like a weeknight or whatever. But I am psyched. I, I it kind of reminds me of um, a video game from the early '90s. It was Ren Stimpy. Oh yeah, you remember the Ren Stimpy Stimpy's invention for Sega or Super Nintendo? Sega, of course. Okay. Ooh, okay. you guys just like went and at it. That just because that I mean, one it was Ren Stimpy, so everything was relying on farts and vomit and things like that but it it just kind of reminds me of that very you know just gross aesthetic (laughs) that was so prevalent with ren stimpy but in such a like does like disaster like survival situation like that just is hilarious it's like cast away with farting (laughs) i can't wait i'm excited that's that's what i want to see great swiss army man cast away with farting that's how they went to the (laughs) That's how they pitched it. That's probably how they pitched it. Promise that's how they pitched it. You remember Wilson? Well, how about if Wilson wasn't a soccer ball or a volleyball? He was actually a dead guy and he farts. A farty dead guy. Farting dead guy. Give us money. (laughs) Give us money. (laughs) Give us money. (laughs) John, what are you looking forward to this summer? Nothing. Really. Nothing. He I hates don't. everything. When you when are you everything? when are we gonna get I was, this? I was excited for Civil War and X Men, and those are already out. And really, I mean, Suicide Squad. Well, we're gonna bit. do a Civil War. Review yeah. Oh, definitely. Because I saw it. You guys haven't yet. I know. I know. I'm on it. I it's promise. amazing. I promise. But um, yeah, I don't. I don't know. I use you know as I get more you know as I get older, more older. As I get older and more jaded, I don't really get as excited for summer movies for the most part especially with the episode we did on you know reboots and and unnecessary sequels and things mm-hmm. like that i you're kind of a bummer i'm kind of a bummer i'm not i'm you're a fall War guy and, you're a yeah. fall winter movie guy exactly yeah i'm not really excited for anything at this point unfortunately yeah it's hollywood's fault. well drag you to all the ones i want to see then and i'm gonna have to go see <laughs> ghostbusters <laughs> Would it be fair to say that the summer thing you're probably looking forward to the most is the Mystery Science Theater 3000 reunion? Yes. The Rift Tracks yes. reunion. What? Yeah, they're going to do I haven't heard about this. That's this month. Yeah, you got to um, get your tickets now. It's one of the Fathom events where you go to the oh, theater and see like, it, the broadcast. Yeah, I've gone, I've gone to those before. Yeah, I went they're to, doing uh, a Mystery Science Theater. Went to theater. Not Living Dead. Yeah, that's oh, a good one. Hilarious. That's a really good one. They've done a couple, too. So they have yeah. like, a couple like Rift versions that's of it. That's awesome. But yeah, they're doing a whole reunion. Like Everybody's coming back. Wow. And that's probably what you're most excited for, isn't it? That's fair. Yeah, absolutely. That's fair. <laughs> it's a good thing to be excited about, yeah. for sure. Yeah. I just thought of it. Wow. That's cool. Well, at least you don't hate everything, right? Just wake me up <laughs> in award season. Yeah, right. <laughs> I saw this obscure movie. I'm really excited about that. Yeah. My fucking farting movie is going to win all the awards. I'm kind of excited for that. Good. 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 Daniel Radcliffe. He goes ahead and gets best supporting actor. The boy who farted. The boy who farted. Well... <laughs> That's the Hunger that's Games That's the Hunger music. Games, man. Oh, balls. <laughs> you 
just uh, said you just mixed no one, up your hunger no games. No one has with ever said Harry balls po- uh, with that amount of sincerity ever. <laughs> yeah, I just realized that. Oh. Uh, well, <laughs> hey, at least we called it out on here on the show, right? Instead of having some, you know, fan to say. What the fuck is up with Dude, John? If we, if we have a fan that says what that. the fuck, I'd be so happy. I'd be like, we you did, listened? We yes! Do have, we do yeah. have a fan that, that wants to have sex with your voice. I heard about that. I heard about that. I don't, that was I don't hilarious. know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think that is amazing. I think it's a testament it to our really show. It was a really good review, though. It, it was, was a, a really fantastic nice review. review. So thank you for reviewing. And guys, if you're listening and you like... Please give us the stars. Please give us the reviews. You know, it really helps us out and makes us and more subscribe. searchable. And I mean, honestly, you yeah, subscribe to us. Guess what? The benefit of subscribing is that every single Friday that we put an episode up, you automatically get it. Boom. Automatically. Quit your and job and do You don't have to do, do anything. Nothing more than listen you don't have to us. do anything. So, uh, yeah, please be sure to find us on Facebook and Twitter at Psycho Show. We're also on Instagram, which yeah. I have to start posting more shit on there. I'm still not used to it. It's good. You'll like it once yeah. you get in the rhythm of it. I like it a lot. We're yeah. gonna get it. You'll get it. We'll I'll, gram, I'll we'll gram this shit. Um, and if you have a favorite movie, or if you're an independent filmmaker, you know, yes. uh, since it's June, you know, well, I mean, this is towards middle of June, um, but I'm going to try to find a, an interview that we can do with a filmmaker or someone involved with movies that, because I want to try to do like one interview a month. Sounds good so to me. if you're a independent filmmaker and you've got a movie and you want to talk about your movie or you want to have us review it you know we won't tear it apart completely um just give us good ones and uh, <laughs> just go ahead and contact us at uh, cinema psycho show at gmail.com or find us on our website at cinema psycho show.com and be sure to subscribe as we just said to catch our next show available every friday and uh we'll see you next time peace in the middle east out see you later <laughs>